Hey everyone, welcome on into another episode of WRL Triangle and Two. I'm Luis Fernandez. He is Mark Bergen. And Mark, we are almost at the college football season. We're going through and recapping storylines, what to watch for for each of the ACC local teams. Let's go to NC State, Mark. The Wolf Pack. Can you go from good to great? We're doing storylines, top storylines for each team. If you didn't catch our videos with North Carolina and Duke, check those out. But we're talking about the Wolf Pack. Can you go from good to great? You've had several years in a row now. You win eight games. You win nine games. You win eight games. You win nine games. Can you get to double-digit wins yep. for the second time in program history? You've mm -hmm. only done that in 2002. And I'm saying this, you go into the year ranked number 24. Ultimately, you want to play for the college football playoff and get in that top 12. Mm -hmm. Can Dave Dorn and NC State do it this season? That is my number one storyline for the Wolf Pack. And I think that's totally fair. This the they've been very, very consistent being in that mm -hmm. kind of seven, eight, nine window area. So it's like, okay, what what comes next? And it's the timing of all of this is so interesting with that 12 team college yes. football playoff, where before with the four teams, I mean, you had to win the ACC, be undefeated, and even then with Florida State being the prime example of this, they didn't even guarantee that you were gonna get into the college football playoff. Now you're hoping the ACC should be able to get two teams in, although we'll, you know, we'll see how things go this season. But at least you have one. Exactly. At least you, you have you one. Have, so you have that possibility. Plus, their schedule is, I don't want to say easy, but it is on paper easier than what you've seen in the past with yeah. NC State playing in the Atlantic. So um I agree. I think that's a great place to start for these storylines. My storyline. Next one I'm going to go with. Lay it on us, Luis Fernandez. Casey Concepcion. Okay. Oh, okay. I, All right. He is the storyline in general. And I say that because he was so incredibly talented and good last year. Mm -hmm. He was the NC State offense. The May, the way they used him, you know, rookie of the year. He's preseason all uh, ACC this year. Last year, 64 catches, 767 yards. He averaged 12 yards a catch. And then on top of that, when he ran the ball, because they did run the ball with him a lot, yeah. he averaged 7.8 yards per carry. So he is just lighting in a bottle. He is incredibly explosive. Yeah. Um, so I'm, I'm so curious to see what the next step is for Casey Concepcion. Um, you know, he was primarily what they wanted to do on offense last year. And now they've expanded. They've grown. They've brought in different players, receivers, tight ends, running backs, quarterback which i'm sure we'll get to here in just a second so defenses are not going to be able to key in on casey concepcion how does that elevate his game as he moves into his true sophomore year yeah he was really impressive a year ago and i thought he got better and better as the season went along and i thought his success there was some correlation to getting him the ball and getting oh, yeah. him the ball in space to make plays to the team's success mm -hmm. as well so that was on my list of how you're going to utilize his skill set. That mm -hmm. was not my number two pick though, Lewis. I mean, I'm just, I used to keep it, keep it interesting. I, I, I'm also, yeah. I'm a sucker. I'm it's a sucker not a bad for, pick. It's just not my number two. I'm, I'm a sucker for good wide receiver play. So when okay. I, when I, I look at it like this, when I watch NC state this year, what am I going to be doing? And mm. nine times out of 10, when they get ready to snap the ball, I will be trying to find Casey Concepcion on the field. And I think that's fair, too, because you're talking about a player. If he continues at his trajectory, yeah. likely has an NFL future. Oh, so yeah. that's good. that's fair. And, you know, that's you, fair. You know, coaches that watch NC State, that's going to be the first thing they try and figure out, too, is mm -hmm. where is Casey Concepcion on the field? All right, what you got next? Grayson McCall. Classic. It's, it's the connection mm -hmm. with Casey Concepcion. Mm -hmm. But he comes over from the Sun Belt, a multi-time Conference player of the year there. Three times. Only player in Sunbelt history to win the player of the year three times. So how does that translate over from the Sunbelt to the ACC? Mm -hmm. I think it will translate over. I found it compelling mm -hmm. that Dave Dorn entering his 12th year saying that he is grateful that McCall is has transferred over. Mm -hmm. Because if you look at the quarterbacks on NC State's roster, this is no knock on any of them. I think it is one pass attempt of any other quarterback on the roster. So you bring over McCall who has 10,000 yards passing at the collegiate level. 10,000 They yards. need him to play at a high level, though. Mm. They need him to play at a high level because behind him, there's not the depth that you would have. So early on in the year, if the Wolfpack can get out to a big lead, I want to see some of the backup players. Remember, you can play, what, four games and still maintain your red shirt to get some actual in-game college experience because McCall has that. 
I think he'll perform at a high level. I hate to even say that injuries can happen, but injuries can happen, well, Lewis. So he has dealt with injuries in the past. So that is just what I'm saying to monitor, you know, in past injury does not always um, correlate with future injury, but it is something to monitor. Like, there is not a lot of experience behind Grayson McCall. That's mm-hmm. for sure. Um, but I mean, he's I, I, the, the thing you hit there was will his experience translate to the ACC? Mm-hmm. And it's not like Coastal Carolina, where Grace McCall I was at previously was just, you know, kind of hanging out and doing their thing like they were they were a good team with Grace McCall mm-hmm. there, often kind of moving into that top 25 mm-hmm. range. Um, you know, they, they are, he his touchdown to interception ratio was about six to one while he was at Coastal Carolina. So he took care of the ball, completed about 70% of his passes. Um, So I don't think that NC State needs their quarterback to put on a cape and be Superman. I think NC State needs their quarterback to be able to run the Robert and I's offense well. One other thing for you to other pick was to with that, just run the offense, but also to maintain his health, to stay healthy. If you're trying to be Superman out there and – taking hits that you don't need to take. Sure. You need Grayson McCall to stay healthy if you want to go and be in that conversation for the college football playoff. E- exactly. And, um, you know, I think w- one thing I will say before I move on to my next point about Grayson McCall, yeah. when you look at, when, when you listen and talk to the wide receivers and a lot of the coaches that are involved with that offense, they've talked about his leadership and how it's kind of been about developing that chemistry early on, taking the young group of wide receivers under his wing, making sure everything is working out, building, growing, teaching. Um, and I think that you, you brought up that word grateful. I think we could see Grace McCall's impact go well beyond just how he is throwing the ball, but also who he is throwing the ball to, mm. if that makes sense. In the locker room. What's your next pick, Lewis? Because you got that you've got the next one here. <laughs> so I think I could go a couple of different ways with this one. Um, but I am going to go specifically with back to kind of like the schedule, the first four games of the season. Um, WRL sports investigative reporter, Brian Murphy has brought this up several times. Essentially we will learn so, so much about this NC state season after the first four games games okay lay it um, lay it on us it, i can so, pull it up if you need me to go, the first game western carolina on thursday mm-hmm. august 29th at carter finley stadium mm-hmm. game number two in charlotte against the tennessee volunteers our old stopping grounds when lewis and i first started knoxville. working together We're working knoxville. yeah yeah but that's going to be a neutral site game i would expect to see more Wolfpack fans there just given the proximity to charlotte tennessee fans are wild man i know oh tennessee, i tr- tennessee trust fans me. are wild we love we vols fans we love you by so the way we I, love we love you i i don't know i'm i i'm expecting that just to be a a, a raucous atmosphere it's uh it's kind of a coin flip game tennessee it's, coming into the year ranked 15th so you got two top 25 teams there game three mm-hmm. uh louisiana lafayette i believe it is Louisiana Tech. It's Louisiana Tech. Got you. Me. I got Louisiana you. Louisiana Tech. And then game four at Clemson. So after you get through yeah. the first four games of the season, you are going to know just about everything you need to know about the um, the what the season's outlook will be in terms of a postseason. Now, we, we've seen NC State finish very well down the stretch last year. So it's not like your season is going to be over. But if they come out of that stretch four and mm-hmm, oh mm-hmm. with wins against Tennessee and Clemson, then you are in the driver's seat to get to Charlotte for the ACC championship game mm. and to possibly represent the ACC in the college football playoff. And see, I'm looking at though, and I hope this isn't stepping on one of your no, picks, no, but ahead. with the conference realignment, you're playing Cal and Stanford this year as well. Yeah. So you're going to be traveling a lot more than you were in previous years. Yeah. You know, we mentioned the first four games, but hey, if you're going out to Cal, right? Mm-hmm. Going out to Berkeley, you know, is because it's something you it's haven't new. done. It's new, yeah. Exactly. It's something you haven't done to this point. So I, I think we're those first four games will tell us so much mm. about this NC State team, particular games two and four. All right. Let me keep this easy. And I'm going to be simple like you, Lewis, in in this regard. Okay. Okay. Uh, Replacing Peyton Wilson. Sure. And you're talking about one of the most heralded defensive players in program history. Yeah. Uh, He's already like beloved in Pittsburgh. He's a rookie linebacker. They feel like they got a 
Russell Mm -hmm. because he flies around the football. And how do you replace that? And I don't think it's just one player. Uh, I know we've talked to the NC State players about stepping up. Um, The defensive lineman who's uh, a defensive edge rusher, his name escapes my mind right now. Talking about uh, Devin Van? Devin Van, yeah. And we've talked to him here at WRL Sports about, you know, what he expects to accomplish this upcoming season in his leadership role on the defense. How you fill that void is going to be huge for this defense. And that's really been the calling card for the Wolfpack of how have you won games? It's been, been playing as high level of defense as you can play and getting what you can from the offense the last yeah. few years. So how you fill that void of a guy where he wins the Chuck Bednarik award. Mm-hmm. Uh, again, I have nothing but good things to say because when it translates on the field of not just the combine, him flying yeah. to the football, uh, he's a playmaker that I don't think one guy just replaces given what he gave to this program in his time with the Wolfpack. Yeah, no, I, I think that's that's definitely a point I was going to bring up. So I think that's very good. Um, and, and he's, you know, he he's was so good for NC State, heartbeat of the defense, all of that stuff. Yeah. Um, for my final point here, yeah, um, I'm going to go from the heartbeat of NC State's defense the past few years to the the brain of NC State's defense the past few years. Tony Gibson, their defensive coordinator. Okay, um, he is one of the best assistant coaches in the country, especially from a defensive perspective. Mm -hmm. So my storyline will be, how does he take this defense and elevate it, raise its ceiling this year? Um, The defensive backs are very talented. Um, Aiden White is one of the best corners in the country. Um, Eight interceptions. He he has not allowed a passing touchdown in two years. (sighs) Um, which is, you know, <laughs> good so, luck, ACC who, receivers. Good who, luck. Who we, attri- who we attribute passing touchdowns to and responsibilities. And that's according to NC state's official website. So keep that in mind. Okay. Um, but he, the, what, what he's able to do with the defense consistently, it's, he's, he's one of those rare, um, you know, uh, defensive coordinators where, or assistant coaches in general, where you don't worry. You say, ah, you know, he's there. He'll figure it out. He'll put something together. Um, just his presence raises the floor of of NC State's defense, NC State's team. So, you know, where is this defense able to go as a, in general with him? So it kind of ties into what you were saying earlier, because there are a lot of pieces that you have to replace. Um, but NC State's defense has proven that they are up to the task. Um, and so their offense, you know, see their growth there. One thing I'll point out, so. NC State had three losses last year in the regular season, right? The Notre Dame loss, bunch of rain. It was at Carter Finley. Um, Notre Dame was obviously the better team that. Yeah, that I was there, and it's like you go into PNC Arena for about an hour. You yeah. come back and uh, Estime, the running back for Notre Dame's, running off yep. for a touchdown as soon as you get back into the stadium. So the other two games that NC State lost versus Louisville and at Duke. Uh, their offense scored just 13 combined points in those games. And that's not going to get it done. And, you know, they they lost a little bit. It was 13 to 10. And then the Duke game was 24 to 3. So oftentimes their defense is going to show up. Um, so I'm just excited to see what Tony gets. It goes to back to what we were talking about when we were talking about the Tar Heels is the complimentary football and how that I, I think you're going to kind of know what to expect from this Wolfpack defense. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so just to recap, or do you we'll want to recap? One more? I got one honorable okay, mention. One more got honorable one mention. honorable mention. Okay. Jordan Waters, the transfer from Duke. Spicy. Just because he's transferring over from the Triangle School. So yeah, that's fair. that is my honorable mention. But yeah, let's recap. And it's, can you go from good to great, mm-hmm. potentially a 10-win season, potentially a college football playoff appearance. Now you've got Casey Concepcion. Mm-hmm. And- Which, watching him at all times. Grayson McCall in this offense. Okay. Uh, my second one was the first four games of the season for NC State, um, which to recap are Western Carolina, Tennessee in Charlotte. Uh, then you play uh, Louisiana Tech at home, and then you play at Clemson. So depending on how you finish those four games, you can have a really good chance of kind of propelling yourself into that college football playoff uh, conversation. Four and oh, even three and one, I think is yeah, a three, success three, there. three and one, like you're in a good position Four and oh, it's like, Oh wow. Watch out for NC state. Yes. So if you, I'll say this, here's my hot take. If you go four and oh, in that stretch, I think you could be looking at an NC state that is creeping towards the top 10. Yeah. If you go four, I see in it. That stretch. I see it uh, replacing Peyton Wilson, how you go about yep. doing that. 
uh, that's a committee approach. Yes. Lewis. Yes. Yeah. No, yeah. there's not, it's not like you're just going to drag and drop yeah. and here's the next yeah. Peyton Wilson. Um, and then, um, finally my, my last one was just Tony Gibson in the defense. What, what do they do to continue to elevate that group in general with just how good of a defensive coordinator he is? Um, always excited to see what that is. It's another edition of WRL triangle and Two. check out our top storylines for the other triangle teams, UNC in Duke, Mark Bergen, Luis Fernandez. Thanks so much for watching.